Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. When you insert columns and rows in a worksheet, there are two rules that you should remember. First, the number of columns or rows that you select will be the number of columns or rows that you insert. Second, new columns will be inserted to the left of your selected columns, and new rows will be inserted above your selected rows. Be careful when you insert columns and rows to ensure that the insertion doesn't create problems for the formulas that have already been created, if any exist, in your worksheets. Formulas will most commonly adjust their cell references to accommodate the insertion, but more complex references may not be adjusted. For example, if you had a formula that was equal the sum of A1 through D1, and you inserted a new column between columns B and C, the formula would adjust to become equal sum A1 through E1. However, it always pays to double check your worksheets after inserting columns and rows to ensure that everything is working properly and still calculating the correct cell ranges. To insert new columns, select the same number of columns as the number of columns that you wish to insert. Remember that the newly inserted columns will appear to the left of your selection. Then click the Insert button in the Cells button group on the Home tab in the ribbon. From the drop-down menu that appears, select the Insert Sheet Columns command to insert the new columns into the worksheet. To insert new rows into the worksheet, select the same number of rows as the number of rows that you want to insert. Remember that the newly inserted rows will appear above your selection. Then click the Insert button in the Cells button group on the Home tab in the ribbon. From the drop-down menu that appears, select the Insert Sheet Rows command to insert the new rows into the worksheet. To delete columns or rows from your worksheet, first select the columns or rows that you want to delete. Next, click the Delete button that appears in the Cells button group on the Home tab in the ribbon. In the drop-down menu that appears, select either the Delete Sheet Columns or Delete Sheet Rows command as appropriate. Ensure that you don't delete columns or rows that are required for the worksheet to function. Also ensure that you don't delete just a few cells within a column or row, as that is a very easy way to really mess up formula references in a worksheet. As long as you delete entire columns or entire rows, the formulas should adjust their formula references just as they do when you insert new columns and rows. Also remember that choosing the delete command is not the same thing as pressing the delete key on your keyboard. Pressing the delete key on your keyboard actually corresponds to clicking the clear button in the editing group on the home tab in the ribbon and then choosing the clear contents command from the drop down menu. This only removes the content from the selection. It does not actually remove the selection itself from the worksheet. When you choose the delete command on only a few cells, Excel must fill in the blanks in the worksheet with information from adjacent cells either below or to the right of the cells that you selected and then deleted. This can easily ruin formula referencing in a worksheet. So be careful and double check your worksheet if you choose to delete only a few cells. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.